Another whistleblower has stepped forward with new information that could expose how the federal government is carrying out domestic spy operations. Badak Pazdar is a computer security expert who was hired in 2003 to help restructure the tech infrastructure at a major wireless telecommunications company. What he found shocked him. The company had set up a system that gave a third party, presumably a governmental entity, access to every communication coming through that company's infrastructure. This means every email, internet use, document transmission, video, text message, as well as the ability to listen to and record any phone call. It is also believed the system would allow the government to be able to trace the physical location of cell phone users. The secret system is known as the Quantico Circuit, named after the city in Virginia, home to the FBI Academy. Badak Pazdar has not named the company where he worked, but the publication Wired reports his claims are nearly identical to allegations made in a federal lawsuit filed against Verizon Wireless. Verizon Wireless is one of several major telecoms facing lawsuits over its role in the government spying program. Congress is still debating on whether to give Verizon and other telecoms immunity, even though their actions broke the law. Vatik Pazdar joins us here in our Firehouse studio. He's the CEO of the computer security firm Bat Blue Corporation. We're also joined by Tom Devine, legal director of the Government Accountability Project, a public interest law firm dedicated to helping whistleblowers. The Government Accountability Project is representing Vatik Pazdar. Welcome to Democracy Now! Both. Vatik Pazdar, tell us what you found, when you found it, and where you found it. Well, uh, I was uh, at one of the company's data centers, the carrier's data centers, and uh, I was there to implement a new security system for them. Um, I uh, was in the process of migrating all the various sites that the organization had, both uh, their affiliate sites as well as their uh, branch offices, and I found this circuit. Uh, when I tried to migrate this site to implement security and controls around it, I was uh, vehemently denied. I was told I absolutely could not do that. Uh, when I tried to, at the least, get some logging around it so that there would be some record of the transactions that were uh, uh, going across that circuit, I was denied that as well. Now, uh, what was, was, did this happen in the middle of working hours? Was this at night that you were doing this work? And uh, were there any other company employees that you asked about the circuit? There were two other uh, consultants there that were long-term consultants for the organization, and uh, they were my sole point of contact within the organization, and we all reported up to the director of security for the carrier. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly does this Quantico circuit mean? What happens, and where does it all go, this information? Well, that I don't know. But what uh, the Quantico circuit was, was a high-speed circuit, a pipeline into a third party that provided this third party unfettered access into the heart of the uh, carrier's uh, network. It had access to the billing system, fraud detection system, um, all the internet access systems, text messaging, I mean, just everything you can think of. So in essence, somebody could... Uh, identify billing records, find out behavioral information about uh, various customers, uh, tap into both data and voice conversations, uh, just have total access. And what do you discern from the, as you were saying, you tried to get a log of, of interaction with it, but, but you could not produce a log? Or what does that mean in terms of what you, your sense is of what was being done by, by that? Well, uh, Everything that uh, security uh, folks do, security experts do, needs to have some transaction around it. We need to know what happened, when it happened, uh, and be able to go back and recreate a scenario uh, from a forensic standpoint, from an evidentiary standpoint, from uh, uh, just knowing exactly what happened when. Uh, logging is critical to that. So whenever we implement a security system, we collect logs, we feed information to a system that preserves log of exactly what the transaction were, who talked to whom, and uh, you know, with what types of services. When uh, it, it's just unheard of to have an organization, especially a carrier, uh, implement a security system 
and not log the information. So in, in other words, what was occurring was that someone was deliberately trying to hide whatever transactions or whatever uh, data was going through that particular line. Well, they were behaving very unusual and not up to industry standards. What was the reaction of your uh, co-workers, of the people you were asking questions of, of the company? Well, they were very squirrely about it. They didn't want to answer the questions. Uh, I thought that the whole situation was very unusual and suspicious, and that's what raised uh, uh, my suspicions in, in, with regard to what the purpose of this connection was. Um, we, uh, I tried to escalate it to the organization's management, and uh, the director of security came down to the data center. It was at uh, 7 or 8, 9 o'clock at night. It was just after hours, definitely, and started wagging his finger in my face, saying that if I, you know, I had to forget about it, I had to move on, and if I couldn't, he would get somebody that would. And what made you eventually decide to speak out about this? Well, my, my concern is uh, about the constitutionality and the legality of it. I mean, uh, any type of a connectivity between uh, a third-party organization and a uh, organization like a carrier that's part of critical American infrastructure has to adhere to very, very specific standards. Any kind of connectivity between governmental agencies and a carrier uh, has to adhere to very specific standards. This did not adhere to industry standards or governmental uh, standards with regard to exchange of evidence. You know, they call it CALEA. So um, I thought this was suspicious. I thought it was uh, of concern, and I thought it should be investigated so further. So how did you speak <clears throat> out, and what kind of risk are you taking in doing that? Well, I'm taking some personal and uh, professional risk in doing this, but I think it's important that uh, folks like myself speak out. Uh, it's uh, very important for us to not let this type of precedence be set, because once that's set, it really has grave impact on the privacy of Americans, especially in an age where your, uh, you know, your credit card and your ATM card has uh, a lot of information about your behavior and your location. There's cameras all over the place, both uh, by city and governmental agencies, as well as uh, buildings and stores and ATMs. There's RFID, radio frequency identifiers. In, be, they've become ubiquitous. They're all over the place. Um, it, you know, even things like Easy Pass. It's really, really important that Americans have some, um, some element of privacy, and to have their phone records, their phone conversations, their uh, data, email, private messages, and and these organizations, these carriers, have now moved to request logins and password to people's business systems and personal systems in order to send them their email. So that reach has extended. And if these guys are just willy-nilly providing this information to any third party or any governmental agency, that's of grave concern to me. Well, the Washington Post in an article this week where it mentions uh, uh, your discovery uh, quotes the FBI as saying that a circuit of the type described by PASDAR does not exist. All telecom circuits at Quantico are one way from the carrier, according to Anthony DeClement, uh, section chief of the FBI's Operational Technology Division. Your response to their, uh, uh, to their claim? Well, then they should have no concern about an investigation. The Washington Post also says since a 1994 law required telecoms to build electronic interception capabilities into their systems, the FBI has created a network of links between the nation's largest telephone and Internet firms and about 40 FBI offices in Quantico. Um, this according to interviews and documents describing the agency's digital collection system. It seems to go along with what you're saying. Why won't you tell us the company that you were uh, that you found this at? Well, I uh, have a non-disclosure. Uh, what what my focus is is to prompt an investigation. Uh, you know, on one side they say the circuit doesn't exist. On the other side, they say the circuit does exist, and it adheres to uh, legal standards. Uh, 
I'm aware of what the legal standards are, and uh, the legal standards call for very, very specific logging and evidentiary chain of custody and uh, privacy uh, for all others except the uh, entity or person under investigation uh, with a subpoena and with a warrant. Uh, none of that existed for this circuit. Uh, I was the person responsible for implementing it. So if I was not implementing it, then it didn't exist. You have filed an affidavit with Congress? I have. How, what is that process? 